Our question is, how does climate change affect agriculture? By Marissa, Zui, and Joseph. Right now, the amount of people on the planet is quickly increasing, and we see no trend or any data to suggest otherwise. Since the population is growing, the amount of waste is also increasing, especially in the form of CO2 and other types of greenhouse gases. When the amount of CO2 increases, the amount of crops that we can grow also increases because plants love CO2. Since we can and need to grow more crops for the rapidly increasing population, we need to clear more forest area and such to increase the amount of farmland we have to work with to grow more crops. With the increase in crops, we also see an increase in harmful things such as irrigation, which increases runoff, pollutants such as pesticides, and soil degradation such as erosion. Methods such as slash and burn kill vegetation before they have time to sustain themselves. Agriculture without much regulation is allowed to release greenhouse gas emissions such as nitrous oxide, which has been increasing, and methane, which has constantly been emitted into the environment. These emissions are bad for other plants, but less for other plants means more for crops, which means an overall increase in temperature due to the lack of trees. Also, fertilizer for mass agriculture is one of the many harmful increases that we have seen, largely contributing to the nitrous oxide overload. When the amount of crops increases, the amount of pesticides also increases thereby decreasing biodiversity of general ecosystems, especially those adjacent to cropland. Pesticides kill bugs, and when bugs die, other animals in the ecosystem die, and it creates a bad cycle that can increase the amount of endangered species, which harms other ecosystems. Greenhouse gases are one of the main contributors to the change in climate. NASA predicts a decrease in sea ice an increase in frequency of hot extremes, an increase in cyclone intensity, precipitation increase in high latitudes, precipitation decrease in subtropical land regions, and a decrease in water resources. Evidence can be seen in things such as sea level rise, global temperature rise, shrinking ice sheets, and others. With a rise in all of these natural disasters, we will see an overall decrease in our ability to sustain the mass amount of crops that we were previously producing. This detriment in food will negatively affect our global economies. So you may be wondering, what can you do? Well, you could start by only buying organic food from your local supermarket and discouraging the harmful actions of inorganic farms, such as irrigation pollutants from fertilizer and many other effects. Another thing you could do is not waste food this is one of the many few things that you could do to help our environment. Wasting food means that farmers need to produce more food, which increases the environmental impact that we have, even if it's indirectly. You might be wondering what you could do as a community. Well, as communities, you could have an increase in transportation via things such as the hybrid bus. This decreases the amount of CO2 from communities, which also decreases your carbon footprint, which increases the healthiness of the environment. It's the little things that you do that help sustain the environment. You might be wondering what everyone can do, and on the global scale, it is very hard to make change. But when we increase regulations, such as that of the Kyoto Protocol, we help facilitate the longevity of the planet. We can see that sometimes these regulations don't always work, and it's very important that many countries all partake and, and abide by these rules, or else we'll see an overall breakdown in the amount of people who actually participate, such as the U.S. currently. This can only happen if we gain support from our political leaders and their support of each other to help save the planet. Some of these changes are small and some of these are big, but they're all important in saving the environment.